Hello and welcome back to Universe Sandbox 2. So today we are going to be using a uh, fan suggestion and going with what would happen if Saturn uh, formed a planet within its rings. So who are we going to be turning into a planet? I think we're going to choose Atlas just because of its proximity to the rings and the fact that it could probably suck them in if we give him a little bit more mass. So Atlas, let's follow your journey in becoming a planet and see how you mess with the solar system at whole. So Atlas is going to start by slowly gaining mass as it smashes into all the small debris in front of it in Saturn's rings. And we're going to hope that at one point, Atlas gains enough mass to start sucking in the rings. So we are getting a lot larger than Atlas's original size. Uh, let's zoom out a little bit. We can see the rings are kind they're pretty hard to see actually uh, with the dark there. But they are definitely there and we are not affecting them yet. So let's go and look at this in comparison to the moon. So Atlas is very, very small. We're going to give it a bit of mass. Uh, we're just going to start it out here. There we go. Now Atlas is pretty large and spherical. So this is where its true journey is going to begin because it has a proximity to the rings close enough that it should be able to pull some objects off of orbit or just into a weirder orbit. But it appears that Atlas needs a little bit more of a push, and that's fine. We're going to give it all the love it needs <laughs> to be able to take over the solar system. I mean, what? <laughs> just, just become a planet. That's the first. The question is what happens if a planet forms. It's not to do it realistically, so we're going to try our best, but priority number one is giving this enough mass. So we can use our imaginations and say that it is slowly picking up debris along, uh, along the way through the rings that is causing it to expand. Soon it's actually going to start doing this on its own soon and we won't have to make anything up. And now we are at one hundredth of the moon. We are still increasing in mass. Things are going to start very slow, aren't they? Two hundredths of the size of the moon. As it gets larger, there is more surface area and mass to pull in the debris around Saturn. And as such, it's going to speed up the process. Ooh, Janus has actually been eaten, which marks the first. And Epimetheus is actually going to be the second. Atlas is now cannibalizing the other moons of Saturn. It's getting close enough to throw off their gravitational pull. And even uh, these over here, such as Aegon, I probably am pronouncing all of these wrong, um, is getting thrown off a little bit. Saturn is actually being pulled slightly towards, its line is, uh, its gravitational pull is being slightly, slightly altered by Atlas. Not enough to really notice, but it is happening. And we can see the impact marks of all of these small bits of Saturn's rings colliding. But Saturn's rings are nowhere near as pretty as they were before because they are scattered all over the place. Atlas is gaining enough mass that it's going to speed up the process once again. And although it's eaten some moons, we're going to give it some help with that. We can see the rings slow down as they pass by Atlas and then speed up as they escape it. This is causing the rings to get kind of lopsided. At five moons, it's getting dangerous. Uh, it is halting some of the uh, rings particles and causing them to stop in their tracks. It's also pulling them in. You can see a lot of little collision marks on it. And you can see as they collide. But let's continue. So Atlas is now reaching the point at which it's getting close to being classified as a planet. It's one tenth of the size of Earth now. As it sucks more and more mass. 
out of Saturn's rings. It's going to soon run out of massed steel, but we're going to keep it going because, you know, the, the question needs to be answered. What's going to happen as it just continues to grow? Ooh, very close to stealing another moon there. It appears that its gravitational pull is affecting pretty much everything around Saturn now. Everything is being slightly thrown off, and the uh, circular orbits from before are getting a little bit wonky. At one and a half times the size of Earth, it's beginning to get in the way of a lot of orbits, and it's just going to slam straight into a lot of these moons. Prometheus is about to fall, along with Pandora. Oh! Wow, they actually got reflected into Saturn. The ring is being pulled and pushed enough that it's no longer escaping Saturn, and many, many parts of the ring are slamming into Saturn, leaving pockmarks across the surface. Two moons slamming into Saturn as well. There goes three moons into Atlas. Atlas is now getting close enough to Saturn that it has to actually worry about getting a, its own collision. Um, I'm not sure Atlas will be able to survive because it's going to get eaten by Saturn soon. But it will eat a few moons before it does so, growing in size once again. And we're about to hit 10 times the mass of Earth. Now, there is a chance that something's going to occur. Yeah. The rush limit is kicking in. Material is being stolen from Atlas and thrown at Saturn, which means we cannot grow the planet much more. I was hoping that the gas from Saturn would actually be pulled into Atlas because it's lighter material, but it appears it's the other way around and we really have to push to keep Atlas growing now. Atlas is gaining heat quickly as it gets ripped apart in its orbit. No! Has collapsed. But this leaves Saturn wrecked. <laughs> its entire rings. Uh, all of its rings are now sunk into itself or Atlas, which it ate. And it is now glowing red in the night sky. It is at... 3,600 degrees Celsius and everything around it is getting a bit of the radiative heat from this. Let's see the effects of this on what we can see from Earth. So Saturn is pretty far from Earth, but we can do our best to try to view it and we'll see if it looks like a red dot instead of the normal white dot. So there is Saturn. Let's go over to Earth. We know where Saturn is now. So from Earth, let's see what it looks like. Oh, shoot. All of the objects around Saturn make it really hard to tell what it would look like. That is quite the problem. But from here, we can see that it is a glowing red dot, so we can assume that far, far away, it'll stay the same. The problem is the way Universe Sandbox... Oh, if I turn off trails... Oh, now we can see it fine. So look at that, we can see a little red dot. And if we zoom all the way out, it'll stay the same. So now our little red dot Saturn is kind of sad. It's, uh... It's kind of doomed now. So now that we've finished that simulation, I guess it's time to uh, continue increasing Sa uh, Atlas's mass. Except now Atlas is in Saturn. So I guess we're just going to increase Saturn's mass. Let's see what happens. Uh, there's a little bit of a disclaimer here. It's not going to end well. It's going to start getting pretty ridiculous, actually. Oh shoot, because of all the different objects around Saturn, we can't really simulate too much at once. So let's just increase its mass. Let's do what we can. We Saturn is now at 200 times the mass of Earth. It's eating its own moons. Its far away moons are beginning to get pulled into itself as well. Now it's bigger than Jupiter. <laughs> At this size, it's going to become a huge problem for the rest of the solar system. 
now it's two and a half si uh, times Jupiter's size. Three times Jupiter's size. Four. Oh, shoot. Darn button. Five. Now the far away moons are beginning to get sucked in. There's not much they can do anymore. Eight. Nine. Ten. Saturn is going to become a star soon. Not super soon, but within a little bit. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 Jupiters. How impressive. And now we're going to start seeing the center of it get hot. Watch the surface temperature over there. It's now at 500 degrees Celsius. 600, 700, 800, 900, 1000. It's beginning to glow again. And now it's a star. Saturn is now so large, it's going to destroy the rest of the solar system, give it enough time. And how are we going to give it enough time? We're going to delete all the stuff orbiting it so that the simulation runs a bit faster. That may not be enough, though. <laughs> well, it looks like Jupiter is being sucked in. Same with the sun. Everything's dying. Okay, so that worked. Uh, the Earth is being yanked away from the Sun, which is causing it to freeze over, and uh, everything else is completely destroyed as well. So, even though this video didn't come out quite as nicely as I wanted it to, um, I guess I guess the lesson of the story is don't mess with Saturn, because little did you know, the entire solar system would be destroyed, definitely. I will see you all next time, thank you so much for watching, and leave a like and subscribe if you've enjoyed, and I will see you all next time, bye!